It's very funny to see people's responses because they're just like, what am I looking at? Is that a body? Is that an animal? Like they just don't know. And so I really love like having this, it's just very, uh, I don't know, a, for lack of a better word, like trippy to see these like different shifts of like pattern and scale with the hair. Um, Cause you don't know it's hair necessarily right away. Black people's hair, braids, dreads, twists. I cut those images out and I collage them into um, what I see as like otherworldly deities or uh, the gods, uh, aliens, future um, folks. And hair is such a loaded um, part of blackness in that like there's like a very long tradition of black people, um, us uh, decorating our hair and being a part of like our family uh, traditions and histories, but also um, people who are uh, in the workplace or school um, asked to leave or, you know, barred from being there because of the styles that they're wearing, because they're Afrocentric styles, or they have their hair in an Afro and like their natural um, styles. Coming from that idea, I imagined us as Black people sort of revolting in this way and our bodies responding and becoming these hair-consumed beings. It's like a divine technology. It's like otherworldly and also and godly and like a, or a, a, like a sacred adaptation, a way that we respond um, that will protect us and keep us safe and, um, and empower us. I love fantasy and sci-fi, and so I love thinking about like different timelines happening, like worlds opening up. I mean, all of that, like in reading and in television, like I love TV. <laughs> so that it's like really, um, it's very inspiring. A very direct influence was like life experience, right? So like um, it came out of my own direct experience of growing up and being a black person and having hair, the kind of hair that I do and having um, things said to me, subtle microaggressions, anti-black things that I would hear about like hair, um, black culture. And so I started to imagine these deities, the future ancestors like coming in and um, just sort of just like wiping away the scene, like getting rid of it. Listen and Behold, which is the, um, a story slash telling, is the most recent painting, which you can kind of see in the background back there. Um, um, that is, that's the most sort of narrative-based painting that I've made thus far, like large-scale painting, because um, it's sort of like, it's a creation myth. It's like the, the deity, the goddess in the center um, with their hands out in a very like religious pose and then they're flanked by these two what I call Afronauts um, or angels who are in seated positions and um, and below them is like this and, and, and on the sides is like this twisting and turning pattern that could be like hair it could be um, I mean to me it represents like life force and um, growth and you know, like the depth I guess because there's like this deep blackness that it's coming out of. Um, so that's, I, I'm just imagining that that figure is sort of telling the story of how this all came to be. Like, how did we get here to become these beings who now are like part, you know, flesh and also like hair. And... With the larger paintings, I feel like people are quite um, in awe. Like it's, it's what I would hope, like really just like taken aback by this, the power and um, of these beings. And I want it to feel empowering, but I also want you to see these beings and be like, whoa, like I am a human and these are like giants or something, you know? Um, well, it has been really, really positive and it's been great to have people talking about it, interacting with it.